Hey everybody! So today we're going to be looking at the Mark Bugs Chalice 3. I thought we'd start with an unboxing and then go through it. And then we'll do a little bit of a review and at the end of the video then we'll have a build video show you how I built it. So it comes in this little box. Open the little box. And there it is. There is nothing else included in the little box. Just the chalice. Let's take a look at the chalice and disassemble it. We comes with a standard pen drip tip that is matched. The top cap unscrews from the base. I wanted to give you a closer look at the top cap and how it works, how it's put together, and how the airflow works. Uh, first, you can see the Chalice 3 logo on one side, and the top cap actually will come apart by unscrewing the top half. from the bottom half. The bottom half is really important because you have the three air inlet holes there and if you flip it over and look at the inside you have one air inlet hitting the coil right there. Those three air holes enter a little channel and that is where the air combines and goes into the coil. Here's your airflow adjustment ring which fits on the top half of the top cap which is here and there's an o-ring that holds it so it slips on there like I said it's very easy to move but very solid it will stay right where you put it assemble these together and the build deck as you can see on the base pretty small two posts single coil but what I wanted to show you is the size of the juice feed because this is a bottom fed device the size of the juice feed is relatively big so it will squonk very very easily hey everybody welcome to the lounge You've just watched the review and the unboxing of the chalice and now we're going to vape on it and tell you a little bit about it. Uh, it's a great quality device. The threading is perfect. To say it's buttery smooth wouldn't do it justice. It's perfect. The finish, perfect. Everything about the build quality of the atomizer is perfect. It's the easiest squonking atomizer I have ever used. So let's give it a vape. Flavor is really good. You have to remember that this atomizer is not made for cloud blowing. It's made for flavor chasing. The chamber is super tight, and so flavor is going to be very dense. Right now, I've got it wide open. I'm used to a dual coil uh, lung hit with full airflow. So, on a big atomizer like an Odin or a Rogue. So this is a little bit restrictive, but great for a mouth to lung vapor.
And as you can see, vapor production is pretty decent. I was surprised at how actually small the atomizer is. Right now it's on the Metal Metallic Red Rio Grande with a standard catch cup. And it is very small. The Chalice has always been one of my unicorn devices. I thought I would never get to try, so it's good to give it a whirl and build on it and see what it's really about. And if you're interested in watching the build section of the video, that'll be coming up right now. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Okay, let's get on to the build part of the video. So I've got the chalice mounted on what I like to use for a build station. It's just a resistance meter. And I've got a pre-wrapped 8-wrapped 27-gauge microcoil. So we're just going to place that on the side with the most room. Wrap the wires around the screws. Let's do this one first. So we snug up that one. And then we'll put this lead in. Okay, so we're going to trap the lead under the screw on the left now. And just snug that up. I don't make them super, super tight, just tight enough so they hold the wire snugly. You don't have to torque down on it. And now our coil is mounted. So let's deal with the leads. I like to bend them up and then we'll give them a snip. And there we have our mounted coil. So let's check the resistance. May have to kill the lights here for a minute. And we are at 0.77 ohms. Okay, we've got the chalice mounted on a standard Rio Grande. This is an all red metallic Rio Grande with an AW18650 battery. And now we want to fire the coil. And this is where I like to take my time. The coil's been mounted, hasn't been touched, and all I want to do is pulse it quickly. You see a little bit of wisp of vapor as we pulse it. Notice I'm not letting the coil get orange at all. I don't actually want the coil to get orange yet. We're just going to pulse it very, very slowly. Pulse it, let it cool. Pulse it, let it cool. You can see it's starting to wake up. This is a 27 gauge coil, so it's going to heat up pretty instantly. And we just want to continue to pulse it slowly. What we're doing right now is annealing the coil, annealing the wire in the coil form that it's in. And as you can see, if we do continue to do this, and let it heat up a little bit at a time, gradually, the coil is going to change color. You notice we don't have any hot legs. We can let it burn a little bit more now. Now you can see the coil starting to turn bluish. 
Okay, now we can give it a little bit more. But you see it's glowing from the inside out rapidly, pretty evenly. Let it cool. There was no pinching, no squeezing, no funny tricks with the coil. Just slowly pulsing it, letting that wire oxidize naturally. Okay, we're pretty much there. So now it's time to let's see what the coil can do. Make sure it's heating evenly inside out. That looks perfect. No hot legs. If you wrap a microcoil correctly, you can get away from any type of squeezing. It's just pulsing. There's no squeezing involved. There's no hot legs. It's heating perfectly. Okay, we can get to Wicket so that you get kind of a picture of what the coil looks like right now. We're ready to wick this now. I've got a piece of Japanese cotton where the outer layers have been removed and I've cut a thin strip. All I've done is twisted the tip so it fits through the coil. So we just want to insert this into the coil And I'll grab my tweezers and pull it through. You want just a little bit of resistance, not so much that your mod moves, okay? Just a little bit. If it's too tight, it's going to choke. Now we'll trim it. And when using a bottom fed device for squonking, you do not need a lot of wick. You can trim these really short. Extra wick does you no good because you really want fresh squills and juice on demand. So you want the wick to be inside the base and short. Let's see if I can show you how this is squawking. Take a look at the feed hole and as we squeeze it it instantly fills with juice. Very easy squonk. Very good drain. So let's get that cotton a little bit wet. Let it do what it does. I'm just going to poke it. Leaving it light and fluffy. I just want to make sure that I'm within the boundaries of the base. and we can fire. That's working awesome. Let's put the top on. And there you have it.